the victim? Oh. Yeah? You remember the matter we discussed last night? Well, it's come to a head. I must see you at once. Oh, surely. surely. All right. I need your help. Yes? I can offer you $10,000. If, with your aid, I can ruin the merchants of Chinatown. My dear, my organization and perfected teleaudience machine. It should prove quite simple and very pleasant. When can you begin on this? At once. as I said, at the same time. All right. We must all strike together. Don't worry. We will. Isn't it marvelous? After all, no one but the Chinese can do this sort of thing well. Thank you. suspend business. Logical thought indicates much profit accrued to evil rivals. So, there's your story. Somebody wants to break up the Chinese tourist trade. But who? When where of knowledge is dry, seeker after truth must thirst. You're just the man I want to see, Mr. Riley. I'll bet you know all the details of the troubles. I want to know who started the troubles, which of the tongs are fighting, are there any hatchet men, how many people killed? Now listen, Miss Whitey. In the first place, you have no business down here. In the second place, I don't know anything about these troubles. And in the third place, you shouldn't be here as I told you in the first place. Oh, but I have to know. I must get a sensational story and get it quick. Now, give me all the details you know. It's Captain Walters. He'll help me. Wait a minute. Well? I'm John Whiting, Captain. 
American representing the Clarion. I want a story of these raids. I must know what it's about, who started it, who was you killed. You get it from the desk, Sergeant. How are you, Foley? Hiya, Captain. Oh, you're the mayor, aren't you? <laughs> you know, that seems funny to me. I don't see anything funny about it. The meeting's upstairs, Captain. Oh, but wait a minute. You have to tell me something. I'm a reporter. Honest, I am. Yeah? He didn't believe me. Quit your clowning. Mr. Tom Chu speak. Yes, Mr. Chu. I have some very important information. My chauffeur will meet you and bring you to my apartment. Mr. Tom Chu? Yes, I'm Mr. Wilcox's chauffeur. My car's right down the street. Oh. I think we can consider the incident of Mr. Tam Chu closed. disappeared on an assignment in your precinct. I'm afraid she may be in a jam. Not that girl. Well, I know her. She'd talk her way out of any kind of a scrape. Yes, I know. But she should have been back here hours ago. I'm worried about her. All right. Don't worry. I'll put a couple of men on it. Thanks, Captain. I'll appreciate it. Andrews, where is John White? That's just what I was going to call you about, Captain. I have every reason to believe that you know more about this than you pretend. Now, let's cut out the stalling and get on to facts. Well, you couldn't be thinking well, I certainly am thinking, but well, I'm thinking hard. Did it ever occur to you that every one of these crimes has been committed exactly as outlined in this book here? You will you'll be too busy to write books. Yes, and you too. Listen, Captain Walters, we're wasting valuable time. Jones in Chinatown, I tell you, and I've got to find her. I don't know why I'm letting you loose, Andrews, but I'm going to take a chance. You have a lot of explaining to do. She isn't found. If she isn't found, it won't be necessary. Come on.
better watch your step. And remember what I told you about the next victim. I'm going to check up with my men. enough trouble. This thing is beginning to get serious. I do the best I can. Now that's the trouble. I'm afraid you do. Sounds sort of fishy to me. 
Who was this fellow you say locked you up? What did he want of you? I don't know, Captain. He said they intended, whoever they were, to put me on a ship and turn me loose when they reached China. Where is this man now? Upstairs, through that room. I knocked him out. Well, why didn't you tell me? Now, you wait here for me. Remove anything by which they might identify you. Oh, Marty, you don't know how glad I am we're together again. Listen, Nelson, when Captain Walters gets back here with that gangster, I'm going to take you to the clearing office, and I'm going to see to it that you stay there. Mm. Seems to me you tried that once before, and it didn't work. It didn't work this time. Now, suppose we all start telling the truth for a change. Where is this mythical gangster you were talking about? Isn't he there? No, Andrews, he isn't there. If he was ever there in the first place. <laughs> Just a moment, Miss Whiting. I'll do the talking for a change. I'm going to close this place tighter than a drum. Best that we resume our operations elsewhere. After all, there are other Chinatowns. Los Angeles, for instance. I haven't completed my work here. Your work isn't necessary to our purpose. White Clayton Chinatown has been totally suspended. Our stories have increased their sales. I'm afraid you're letting your personal feelings interfere. What do you mean by that? Not an Andrew. That isn't true, Victor. Your mind is so set on revenge that it's become an obsession with you. And why shouldn't it be? You and I have every cause to want revenge. Why shouldn't you feel as I do? Haven't you suffered as I have? Perhaps. But my primary motive was a business one. I wanted to increase our sales. I've done this in San Francisco, and now it is necessary to move on. It is only your personal feelings that keep you from leaving. You understood my personal feelings when you enlisted my aid. I'm sure that they will remain the same in other locations. Leaving San Francisco will give you the opportunity of continuing with your experiment and be of great benefit to my employees. Hmm. You have given me something to think about. Yes. We shall discuss it first. King is back. They're in again. Harrison, I've got lumps in my head, corns on my feet, and contusions on my brain. I've nearly been murdered on five different occasions, and I'm in wrong with the police department who accused me of trying to commit suicide. Now, it's all your fault because you're trying to make a reporter out of a society editor. Now, either you keep this pet in your office where she belongs and out of my life, or I'll have the law on you. So what? So that's what. I'm warning you. And as for you, you keep out of my life. You know? You seem a little peeved. Oh, uh, you know how Marty is, Chief. Just crowning all the time. Keep in his heart. He's really very fond of me. Yeah, and I'm fond of him. And that's why I'm going to put you in a position where you can't annoy him for a while. Oh, Chief, you're not going to fire me. Not this time. I'm going to save it and give it to you for a Christmas present. No. I'm going to send you to Los Angeles. I just received a tip that there's a woman sailing on the city of Seattle tonight that is mixed up somehow in this Chinatown business. Now, her photograph is in this envelope. It came to me anonymously. Now, you go down to the cashier, draw the money that you need. Get my things packed, Sally. I'm leaving for Los Angeles tonight. You'll stay here and watch the apartment. Yes, ma'am. Nice place you got here. Yes. Now, here's your ticket. You better keep it in case of a mix-up. Well? How long did the big fella say he was going to be gone? Why? What difference does it make? Well, it might make a lot. I want to talk to you, and I wouldn't want to be doing it when he came in. Then I wouldn't advise talking here. No? Well, I want to talk. I'm getting tired of taking advice. Advice is another name for order. 
I've had enough of them. Haven't you? What do you mean, Grogan? Oh, you know what I mean, Sonia. Now, if you and I were to get together, we wouldn't have to take any more orders, would we? You. Cooley. Well, I'm a coolie, am I? All right, sister. Then I'll act like one. Turn around, Grogan. Turn around and look at me. Crack that pistol! I don't feel safe anywhere on the boat. Nonsense. If it'll make you feel any easier, you only have my cabin. Thank you. I feel a lot easier.
Get up, man, and drink. Drink to yourself. Andrews, I'm going to tell you everything. The man is back at all of this. He's trying to wipe out the Occidental and the Oriental race. He's trying to start a new race of his own. And that man's name is... Oh! and bring Grogan here. Well, that's impossible, Chief. He's unconscious. We can't carry him. There's a watch on deck. Here. Yeah. Put three drops in his tongue. And you will recover sufficiently to walk. Now go. This is the woman I'm following. She's the American representative of the European chain store syndicate, which is trying to ruin the Chinese merchants. Nothing wrong. This is a photo of Sonia Rokoff. She's an employee of the San Francisco Chinese Merchants. I don't care who you think it is. My information comes from the city editor, and he knows. It is said, no man may serve two masters. A book does not specify how many masters a woman may serve. Another sick as he'll be tomorrow. That's the third one tonight. Just be careful if he doesn't get noisy. Don't worry. He won't wake anybody. Who is that? That? It's our friend Grogan. But I thought he was dead. No, not yet. You see, I'm thrifty, Sonia. I never discard an article until I'm positive I have no further use for it. But why is he wearing your disguise? It is necessary, my dear. If there is any suspicion, it will fall on Grogan. Here, put this on. Later, I will rehearse you in your part. Mr. Andrews? We are faced by a serious problem. Wouldn't our best bet be to catch him as he tries to land? Exactly. And as you are familiar with this case, I'm going to ask you to help me and my men. I think we can spread a watch on deck that will be impossible for him to get through. But they couldn't have got away, could they? Beginning to look that way. Take him 
there and put him on the bed. Then come back in here to me. Yeah. I don't like being left alone with him either. I don't know. Potan gave it to me. Said it was a mild sedative. To use it if Grogan got nervous, excitable. That's all he said. He didn't tell me anymore. Oh, I'm afraid. Yeah, I know. I've always been scared of him, but I... I thought that you... Not anymore. He used to listen to me. He used to take orders from me. It's funny to think of that. Now. Keep him covered, Wong. Joan, see if she has a gun. Sorry, Sonia. You can put your hands down if you want. Mr. Rokoff, there are a lot of questions I would like to ask you. Will you answer them now or shall I telephone for the police? Stand by. I was wrong. I admit that. But what could I do? I never intended the thing to go as far as it has. He forced me. He? Who is he? I was afraid of him. We were all afraid of him. Grogan, Healy, all of us. We couldn't help ourselves, I tell you. And then when we saw what happened to Grogan... What happened to Grogan? She means to look in there. The old man. He was on the ship. I saw him. The old man, all right. But it's Grogan, too. I could never forget him. promised to help us in return for our protection. But we can't protect you unless you tell us the name of the man... Bong. Like the other one, she's hypnotized.
shouldn't have been he who hypnotized her anyway. He was just a hired thug. Whoever did it must still be around here. and Miss Rokoff out of here quickly. Whoever it is who set that explosion will expect we were all killed. This lonely houseboy suggests we take these two speechless persons to jail. No. It's evident that they act involuntarily. We must get Miss Rokoff to a hospital so we can get the rest of her confession. Yes. Take care of them. We're going to take you away from here, Miss Rokoff. She's absolutely speechless. Yes, why don't you try it sometime? You will wake now. Your sleep has lasted long enough. You will wake. Sorry, Mr. Andrews. This woman is completely under the control of the person who hypnotized her. Unless you can produce that person, she will remain in this condition. No one else can bring her out of this trance. Only a specialist in psychiatry. I suggest uh, Dr. Zander of San Francisco. I don't need your help to stay here. The detective. Long. Oh, they weren't all killed. I follow Mr. Wong. You go back with your partner. Find out what happened. Wait for me there. Has my brother learned anything? A great deal has been discovered, but not the name of the man who attacked the Chinese merchant. May I help you, sir? <laughs> no, thank you. I'm just shutting it out. If I should like something, I'll uh, call you. Oh, they have taken Sonia and Grogan to the Shepherd Hospital. Mr. Andrews and Miss Whiting were drive to the city by the inland route. He doesn't seem to respond, Doctor. Her reactions are quite satisfactory. I know I fill in with important information. All Chinatown on the West Square has been closed indefinitely. The work done at the request of the merchants. The police are puzzled. I can aid the police. I tried to serve two masters. I hired Cotton because, being an Eurasian like myself, he hates both the European and Asiatic races. His hatred for the Chinese is so great that he has become a madman on the subject, a madman bent on extermination. And he will succeed in his plan if his inventions are not destroyed. He has a machine which is an advanced form of television. He can see and hear what is going on in any room where he has placed what he calls a dictavisa. Dictavisa? Never heard of the thing. Nor has anyone else, Captain, except Potan. It is a very small contrivance which may be easily hidden out of sight. There is one in the house of Dr. Wu, and one in the home of every prominent merchant in Chinatown. For all I know, there may be one in this very room. That's a fine fairy tale. You're sure you're not trying to save your own neck? You're right, Captain Walker. I am trying to save my life. I have employed a Frankenstein monster who threatens to destroy me. And you, and you, 
And you. And a whole nation if he can accomplish it. Go on with your fairy tale. What kind of gadgets are these things? What do they look like? This machine you speak of. Where is it located? Didn't you stop her from talking? Quite. I'm trying. Tell me. I felt as if I were falling into a dream. Asleep. I'm all right now. You can't do anything. No. Not now. The psychiatrist has the advantage. Personal contact. And you're willing to lead us to this laboratory? Gladly. And you're not afraid? Of course. I am afraid. But I depend on you to protect me, Captain. Right. So what's that going to do, Governor? When this thermometer Register 250 degrees. Order this gas to be released. This is the door to his laboratory. Out, he might grow suspicious. He must remain very quiet. So he returned. off a deadly gas at a temperature of 250 degrees. Oh, then you knocked that Bunsen burner out just in time. So, are you all right? Don't. Come out of it. You have to. Don't you understand? If, if anything happened to you, I, I couldn't go on. You mean that, Un? Say, were you playing possum? Not your turn to ask questions till you answer mine. Did you mean what you said? Forget it. I must have had a whiff of that gas myself. All clear, sir. 
I want 35 Ferguson Alley closed so that a rat couldn't get in or out of it. Yes, and arrest anyone who tries without a pass from me. This is once. Mr. Wong will accompany you. Oh, oh but, but... There are no buts. We're going to investigate this place. Oh, but you need me, Captain. I've been all through this place several times. I want to help. You're going to help. You heard Mr. Okoff's description of this man, Potan. I want that description to appear this afternoon's edition of your paper. We'll fix it so that man can't find a hiding place in this city without danger of being identified. Honest, Captain. You're smarter than I thought you were. Here, I'll give you a pass so you and Wong can get out of Chinatown. Here. No. Wong, you take it. She'll lose it. Think over what you said to me, Marty. If you want to go back on your word, of course, there's nothing I can do about it. If you don't clear out of here, I'll make a speech before witnesses that you beg me to take back. Ladies Hello. and... Ms. Rokoff, will you show us this rabbit warren? Certainly. This way, Captain. Stop. Healy, draw those curtains. Sit down, Grogan. There. Do you think this is a wise move? The police seem sure to come here. They're not going to advise me. Oh, no. no, you got me wrong. I only thought... You saw. So did Grogan. I took steps to see that he stops thinking. Look at him. And if you make it necessary, I can arrange to put you in the same state of blissful helplessness. Oh, no. Not that. I'm here to take orders. I'm going to get you out of this jam. Then watch the street from the window yes. and take care. You shouldn't be seen. Yes, sure. Say an ancient fable of man seeking lost horse. Well? Man imagined himself horse. Then go where horse would go. Well, imagining myself to be for a town, I would think I was least likely to be looked for at Sonia Rokov's uptown apartment. Detective instinct will like beautiful chrysanthemum in your honor head. Captain Walters, I have a hunch I'd like to play if you'll pass Willie and I out of Chinatown. All right. And when you get out, stay out. I'll have my men search this place thoroughly. Mr. Rokov, I wonder if you'd let me have the key to your apartment. Of course. But why? You don't think uh, I might be able to pick up a clue. I'll let you know if anything further develops. Thanks. I don't think you two will be of any further use here. Dr. Wu, will you please stay at your quarters where we can reach you? I'll drop you at the clarion office. Give Miss Whiting any further details that you think will aid us in the search. Does that cover it? Excellently. Miss Whiting has written a very vivid description of Victor Potan. There, Mr. Harrison. Do I get a raise? Don't bother me now. I'm busy. Copy, boy! Copy! 
It means a lot. Are you still frightened? Not for myself, but I am worried about Mr. Andrews. What about him? He's gone to my apartment. He thought he might find a clue. He thought he might find Potan there. Did he go alone? No, he took Willie Foo. It is unlikely that Potan would go there. Of course it is. That's just why Potan would go there. Because it is unlikely. Martin guessed that. Hurry, my car's outside. Look, there's a fight. Fools will kill themselves. Oh, look, Why don't they get back away from that edge? It's Marty! And Grogan, he'll kill him. Congratulations. How do you feel? Still anxious to find that man, Potan. Then I'm under arrest, Captain Walters. The law can wait. But you can't stay here. It isn't safe for you with that maniac loose. But where can I go, Captain? Joan can take you to my house, and that'll keep her out of trouble. Thank you. That would be very pleasant. Well, now that that's settled, I'm going to take a look around Chinatown. You better leave that to us, Andrews. The police have got Chinatown covered like a blanket. But I believe I know several spots where this man, Potan, might try to hide out. Capturing this madman would be a great personal satisfaction. And I'd like to try it. Like that of old on Dragon Slaying Expedition, Honorable Master must have lowly squire. Nominate myself. I second the nomination, Willie. I'll go along just to see that the election's on the level. Now listen, Mrs. This is a man's job. Listen yourself, Mr. Superior Sex. Not the Victorian age. A woman can do anything a man can. All right, all right, dear. You're right. But 
You'll stay away from my sake, won't you? But, but, but what about my duty to the paper? Oh, you'll get your story all right, and it'll be exclusive. Now, I wish you'd take Miss Wilcox and Willie along with you to my house and wait for me. All right. Listen, Willie, you're to guard these ladies with your life. Don't let either one of them out of your sight until I return. I am not an appreciative of responsibility, but regret necessity for leaving Honorable Master Squire less. That's all right. Captain Walters will be my squire. Your what? What do we do? I know one place. They never watch for us. Martin Andrews home. What? No one is there. It's the last place the police would look for us. Let's go. Get away before the crowd comes. Well, Dr. Wu, I think Chinatown is safe from his invasion. Thank you, Captain. We are safe in the hands of your fish and force. And you, Mr. Andrews, we have much to thank you for. Well, without Captain Walters, I'd have been out of luck. Good day, gentlemen. Good day, Doctor. Good day, Doctor. Mind to send a couple of men to your place while the girls are there. Why do that? I'll take the girls to Jones' apartment before tonight. You will not. Don't let those girls out of your sight till we capture this lunatic. Or do you rather have them spend the night at the police station? Why, of course not. I'll take care of them. Shall I investigate right away? You're not going to investigate
have saved my life. Telephone the police, quickly. Now you talk, and talk fast. I don't know where he's going. He was crazy. Raven man! Come on, spill it. Oh, I know he's got a full title, but Doc Fletcher. He hoped to get to China after he polished you off. Take care of him, Willie. Yes, I'll have a lot. Police headquarters, quick! Number WS17171. Calling all cars. Attention all cars. Stolen black coupe. California license number WS17171. Man named Potan. Tall, dark, Eurasian features. Cars number 2729. Watch the waterfront. Take no chances. Hey, wait a minute. That was Potan, the Eurasian. What, not the Chinatown killer? Yes. Well, I guess he saved the state the expense of a trial. At last. At last, we can stop chasing around Chinatown and get back to work. Now, let's see, who are we? Something about Lu, I believe. Ancient Chinese queen, honorable master, has passion for slicing off heads of male subjects. Killing all the males? Seems sort of silly. What was the idea? Poor Chinese queen have no other way of getting what she wanted. So different from modern American girl. So, oh, the modern American girl gets what she wants, does she? You're wrong, Willie. And I'm gonna... Oh, Marty, you're a wow. You're the greatest detective in the world. Sherlock Holmes is a back number. Look, you're all over the front page. And little Joan puts you there. Now what I want is an exclusive personal interview with you, and I... Sit down. You're not going to get an interview from me or anyone else. You're through with the clarion. I just called Harrison and had you fired. Oh, Marty, you couldn't have... You couldn't have done that. Oh, couldn't I? Do you think I'm going to have my wife working on a newspaper? Or anywhere else, for that matter? Oh, Marty... Your wife? Yes. But well, why not? But, but Marty... Shut up. I don't want to have any trouble with you. Ancient Queen Lou and modern American girl have much in common. They always get what they want. Slight difference in method only. Hey. <laughs>